Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. This is the A History Knits podcast. I am coming to you from Superior, Colorado, where I live with my husband, my daughter, and our two dogs, who are peacefully sleeping right now, so I'm taking advantage of that. Um, and it's very sunny, so that's really great. We're getting good light. Now the whole, I look like I'm getting a little bit washed out, but that's okay. We're just going to go with it. Um, oh. Let me, let me mention this for a second. This is a basket that my friend Deborah made me, and I have it now in the background there. It's holding my minis for my advent um, calendar that go into my blanket that I'm making, which I don't have much progress to show you, so I won't be showing you that this time. But I just saw it in the background, and I just wanted to point it out. But anyway, <laughs> so here we are. Um, I'm in the middle of finals week, so I'm so sorry if I seem a little discombobulated. That's just how it is. Uh, I have about 101 grades to submit by Sunday. <laughs> So yeah, just a little bit insane right now, but we're going to get into the knitting and um, so these are the finished objects over here, these are the whips over here, and then I'll talk a little bit about life stuff at the end. So I hope that you'll join me for that. Hello everybody, um, this is Vanessa from the future. I am editing the podcast and I completely forgot to include uh, a mention of the knit along that we have going on. Deborah, who is the host behind the Diary of Physicist Farm Gal, and um, and our podcast here at A History Knits, we're doing a knit along that ends at the end of the year, December 31st, and that is the I Like Big Shawls and I Cannot Lie, and uh, we will both be drawing prizes from our Ravelry groups. We have a chatter thread where you can talk about big shawls, not necessarily committing to one, to, at least to making one at the end of the year, and then we do have a finished object thread, so if you do, by any chance... I guess you have two weeks <laughs> to get a giant shawl, and by giant I mean 1,200 yards, done by the end of the year. You could definitely submit it into the finished object threads, and we are both going to be drawing prizes from each of our threads and announcing those at the beginning of the year. So if you do want to talk about thread or talk about shawls or submit your big shawls, be sure to do that before the end of the year. Okay, now back to the podcast. But first, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. And this is my Nordiska. I talked extensively about this on episode 38, and this is um, not supposed to look like this. I heavily modified it intentionally and not intentionally, um, or unintentionally, I guess. That's the word. <laughs> and um, all of that information is on episode 38, as well as I'm on Ravelry as a historian knits, and I do have all, as, I think, as much information as I remembered to put into my project page but yeah this is supposed to have longer sleeves with color work obviously I didn't do that um, and then then it's supposed to have like 10 inches of positive ease which obviously it does not have but I think it looks really nice and I actually bought this like high-waisted I don't have hair on there <laughs> this high-waisted black skirt on Amazon and it just fits really nicely with that as you saw color work at the bottom which was not that difficult it took I think I did all the color work in one when sitting and then um, this increase has a little and it's on the back as well little um, cable which I love and I am completely sold on fingering weight sweaters because they are fantastic um, this is actually the first fingering weight sweater that I have ever made and I feel like I'm not even wearing wool at all the problem is that I've had um, all of my sweaters are I think they're either sport DK and then I have a worsted one and they're just so heavy and so hot I don't know what it is I just I'm very uncomfortable in them for long periods of time and I always have to take them off especially up here in my office slash bedroom um, it gets really warm up here because the sun comes in during the day and it gets really warm up here so it's not really comfortable to wear a sweater up here when I'm working and when I go outside yeah it's a whole thing so I found that this is the perfect weight of sweater for me, and I will be making all of the fingering weight sweaters, even if they take 20 years to make them, but they just seem to be the most wearable. I've worn this two days in a row already, and it's just so comfortable and so light, and I love it. So I'm sold on fingering weight sweaters. So let's get into whips, which I have a lot, because I am frantically trying to finish Christmas knitting. Um, I've already told my husband that he's not getting his socks this year. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I am bored with the socks and they're taking too long because his feet are too big and I just, I'm not going to deal with it this year. So he's going to get them next Christmas. <laughs> he might get two pairs next Christmas, if he's lucky, if I actually get them finished. <laughs> so I already told him I'm not going to make them. He's like, that's fine. He doesn't wear them that much anyway. He only wears them when it's, according to him, really cold. 
whatever. So um, he won't be getting them until next year. So I've actually bought him some wool socks to go hiking in. So he's doing all of the, the 14ers here in Colorado. That's like his thing now. So basically a 14er is a, a mountain that is over 14,000 feet. And we have a lot of them here in Colorado. So there's like a thing where you go and do as many 14ers. I think there's like 50 something of them. Don't quote me on that. But um, there are quite a few of them and he wants to do them all, of course. So I bought him some wool socks. So I finished a couple of things. So I finished these. These are for my daughter Amelia. And I'm starting to think, so for some reason in the middle, I think it was in the middle of this year, I started doing 10 stitches on the toes. I have no idea why. I'm thinking because I was doing 10 stitches on the heels. Um, kind of decreasing to 10 stitches and then kitchenering it and I just decided oh maybe I should just do it at the toe that way I could just do 10 and 10 but I'm thinking these are starting to get too pointy like I don't like that maybe I'll have to stop at 12 is what I'm thinking oh there's my dog's tail <laughs> I'm thinking I'll probably have to stop at 12 because I don't like how this is looking but um, I think for next year I think I might just have to start doing 12s again on the toes and keep the heels at 10 maybe I don't know. I'll have to think about that. I just, yeah, I just don't like this pointiness. But anyway, these are for my daughter. And she picked out, this is a Hufflepuff color. So Hogwarts, Harry Potter, she's really into that. And Hufflepuff is the house that she belongs to. And um, she picked out this gray. It's not exactly the same kind of gray as this one, but that's the color she picked. So that's the color she got. And this was in the um, a localish dyer. She's up in Fort Collins, which is about an hour away from us. Um, my dog ate the tag. So <laughs> this is Holly Press Fibers in the Just a Smidge colorway and the Stealth Striping. I had these cranked on a, um, a sock machine by Freckled Whimsy when she was having a sale this summer. Had a bunch of socks, uh, sock yarns cranked and this was one of them. So basically I just did the toes, the heels, and the cuffs. Um, the toes I ripped out and um, knitted them because this was all just a big tube, so I knitted them back, and I really didn't like that. Um, so I think from now on, I'm just going to do a contrasting color or a complementary color instead of using the same yarn, because I just re really didn't like that process. Um, and then I just put in an afterthought heel, and then um, 20 2 by 2 ribbing, which is what I usually do. So yeah, I, I still have the other half the blank, of the sock blank, that this goes with, um, which I'll use to make another pair of socks, probably not anytime in the near future. I'll probably use it for next year. So I still have that in my drawer, and so I'll be able to get two pairs of socks per sock blank. And these are gonna be for her, and the other one are gonna be for her as well. Sometimes I'll make some for my mom, but these two are gonna be for her. So this is another Christmas present that I could actually put away in her box. And yeah, I still have two more things that I wanna make for her by next week. And when I get all of that stuff done, hopefully I'll, I'll show you the pile of stuff that I wanted to give her or that I gave her by that point. Because I think next time my podcast won't be until next year. Oh my gosh. So I will see you guys till next year. I'll be, I'll be putting up some shorter videos, which you'll see in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've already recorded one for blankets, what I have on my needles in terms of blankets. And then I just did one today for accessories. So look out for that one in the next couple of days. But yeah, so I got this one done. Then I got... A hat done for her as well she wanted she's really into wearing hats right now so I made her a hat this is the Olive and Jack um, pattern by Sarah Stevens I've made this hat like four or five times and it's just a really easy cabled hat um, I used Malabrigo Anniversario and I don't know if you can tell but I think I'm, <laughs> I lost track of where I was because I was knitting and watching vlogmas and I don't know what else I was doing I was doing like five different things at once and I think I should have um, done a cable further down here I don't know but she won't care it doesn't matter <laughs> so this is just going in her pile for Christmas knits and I think she will I think she'll like it she picked out the yarn so at least I know that she'll like the yarn so there's another one apparently it was just like the Amelia episode because the next thing I have is for Amelia as well so these are these have been in my needles for quite a long period of time these are the Han H-A-N-N-E I guess that's how you would say that. The Han um, Mittens, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's by Amy Christoffers. And basically, they're just like colorful. Um, so 
So that's what they look like. She wanted some mitts to go hiking in, and these are really warm. I'll show you the yarn in a minute. But yeah, so I think she'll, she's seen them already, so she, she knows that they're coming to her. Um, I think I kind of messed up on, no, Let's see which one it was. Let's see, now I can't tell. I think it was this one. I messed up on the decreases on this one, but again, unless you really look really carefully, um, I don't think you'll be able to tell. But I think they came out pretty well. Yeah. They were not... I mean, they were they were fine. I just wasn't really into the color work pattern on DPNs. It was awful. I hate DPNs to begin with. But DPNs and doing color work and... Mm, it just wasn't fun. That part wasn't fun. Um, if, I, if I had... I should have magic looped it, but oh well. So... I, maybe I didn't have the right size in a circular needle, so I had to use DPNs. But anyway, yeah, they're done. They've been on my needle since, like, February. And now I'm covered in Angora. Um, these have Angora. That's why you can tell. I don't know if you can see the, the halo there. But there's a, a good halo going on here. So let me talk a little bit about the yarn. So this is in... She picked up this yarn in the... Last winter, I think. So this is Kenzie. And it's, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see what it is. It's 50% New Zealand Merino, 25% Nylon, 10% Angora, 10% Alpaca, and 5% Silk Noils. So yeah, it has a lot of stuff up in here. And I don't know if you get to see the Noils in there, those bright pops of pink. And this color is, now I can't remember which color was which. Well, one color is... <laughs> Six, and then the other color is, no wait, I'm sorry. One color is 1015, and the other color is 1000. So, if I were to guess, I'm guessing the, the beige is the 1000, and then the pink is the 1015, but I could be mistaken. I have all of that information. Oh gosh, now I'm just covered in alpaca and angora. That's why it's so fuzzy. Um... But that's Kenzie, and this was a really nice yarn to work with. This is what I have left, and I'm probably going to be making some little ornaments with this. I'll show you in a minute, because I, I was obsessed this week with the little ornaments. But um, I'm really happy to get these off my needles. Um, I don't know if I'll ever make color work mitts again. It just wasn't my thing. Um, but they're done, they're pretty, and they did block out quite a bit. Um, they were a little bit wonky. I don't know if you could tell anymore, but there was one mitt that um, the tension was really tight in one section, and then that actually blocked completely out when I washed them. So they're ready to go. Another present on the needles. So there you go. And then, so I showed you this, I think, a couple of episodes ago. I made a couple of these little bluebirds. What is it? Bluebirds of Happiness by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner. And these were just really easy to just use up scrap yarn. So this is going to go into my gift pile. So I've already given one of these away. I think I made two. Yeah, I made two. I gave one to my mother-in-law. So this one's just going to be going away in my gift box and maybe attach it to a gift somewhere down the road. And then I became super obsessed with this particular pattern. And I made all of the little hats because I have problems. <laughs> so I wanted to use up, where is it? So this was the same yarn that I used this in. And I really didn't want to make another little bird because I was kind of bored with it. Because again, DPNs. Didn't want to use DPNs. I wanted to use something that had magic loop element that I didn't have to use double pointed needles. So this had, this was my very first one. I wanted to use the, the rest of that yarn. And uh, this was DK in the Firefly Chai. And as you can see, maybe not. It's getting blown out. But it does have a um, slip stitch detail that you can't really tell with this yarn actually unless you really look for it but um so it was a one by one and this is a free pattern on Ravelry it's called the mini knitwear ornaments it actually comes with a hat a mitten and a stocking and it's a free pattern by Jacqueline, Jacqueline White and you can use I used a variety as you see <laughs> let me show you all my little hats and this isn't even all of them oh <laughs> trying to figure out the best way to show this to you. This is not working. <laughs> there we go. Okay. But anyway. So, go back to this one. 
So I wanted to use up the rest of this and the actual pattern in the hat uses a slip stitch and then a one by one ribbing at the bottom. And I had a little pom pom maker. So I used that and then it became a little ornament. So this is again gonna go in my stash for, actually this might go on my tree. Um, a couple of these are gonna go on my tree and a couple of them are gonna go for, for presents later on. But I've actually already given two of these as presents, one to my mother-in-law and one to a coworker. Um, as a little Christmas present. So this was the first one. So this is the one with the slip stitch. After that point, I just decided to do my two by two ribbing because that's what I enjoy more. It's more of a rhythm for me. And then I decided to take out the slip stitch pattern. Um, eventually, I might want to do some more different patterns on this, maybe some color work. Hmm, who am I kidding? Probably not color work. I'm just not a fan of color work right now. Um, but they're just so easy to make. And I used a variety of, this one was just DK weight. But then I used, um, well actually I should, okay, so that one's DK weight. This one was DK weight as well. This was again another scrap. I believe this was Gnome Acres something. I don't remember the pattern. Um, but you can see I started, well this was a, this was also a one by one ribbing. But again this was uh, eliminating the, the slip stitch design. It's just a plain. And it took me, it takes me like an hour to make one of these little things. So just super scrap buster. Scrap buster? <laughs> that sounded weird and then this one was actually worsted I don't know if it's much bigger not really it's like a smidge bigger than the DK one but this is um, actually given to me by Susanna who is a viewer and a friend and she actually sent my daughter a cowl that was knit out of this yarn it's really bright um, but I decided to make this into a little ornament for a Christmas tree so this is worsted weight worsted weight yarn I'm not sure exactly what it was um, here I did a two by two ribbing and then I just did the regular non-slipped stitch so this will be going on our Christmas tree and then these three were actually fingering weight held double so again, same size as the DK weight one. It just uses a lot of fingering weight yarn as well. So this one I used a kind of a really bright color with a um, neutral and held a double. So this is a two by two ribbing. And then the pom pom is even fluffier because it's fingering weight. And then here's another one. I held this yarn double. Maybe I held, yeah, I held the yarn double. Um, I didn't use a neutral with this one. I just held the yarn double. And I think I'm using, I'm going to use these two for a garland that I'm going to make eventually. We'll see. If not, they just might become ornaments and be given to somebody. But these, right now, I'm hoping they'll make a little garland out of them for, for Christmas time or winter time. And I can't even remember what these were because they were in my scrap pile. And then here's another one. And again, this was in my scrap pile. Um, I believe the pink was a woolberry. I don't remember the color name, but you can see here, I held, I used these two colors and held them together. But um, this one was a little bit wonkier than the rest. I think this might've been my second one. I think I lost track of where I was in terms of the decreases. So it's a little bit pointier than the rest of them, but it doesn't really matter. And I could just, same. So yeah, um, and I, as I said before, I made two more on top of this, <laughs> this pile of little hats and, um, they were just so easy to make and they just went through scrap. I think each one takes about eight grams and there's just so many different combination of colors, of patterns, of all kinds of stuff that, that would just make a cute little, cute little hat to put on a gift or something. So that is it in terms of my, I believe that's it. Yeah. That is it in terms of my finished objects. Now I'm going to get into whips. Um, basically the only whips I have are the ones that you saw last week. I believe you saw these last week. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you saw these not last week, the week before. Um, and yeah, it's just been a matter of trying to get the whips down and trying to get the presents for Christmas done. And that's what I've been doing. So this is in my mini moon, mini moon bag. One of my favorite makers. You've seen this a million times because I'm, I'm working on this every day. So I just wanted to show you my progress. Um, this is a pin that I got from my friend Deborah's. Oh, it's getting blown out. There we go. My friend Deborah's uh, local yarn shop, knit two together in um, Russellville, Arkansas. And in here is my 100 day project that I'm participating in. Um, WTF Knitting is doing 100 day project and he is um, basically you have to work on the same project every day for 100 days, even if you're just doing 15 minutes to 30 minutes. And I know Deborah is actually working on something similar only um, 
it's like a two month knit along, I believe. Um, Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal, you can check her out. She has more information on that on her podcast. But she's also participating in that, and I think I'm going to use some of my whips to try to get rid of some of them and get them done in next year. Because my goal for 2021 is to get my new whips down. <laughs> this is like old story. Um, so now I actually finished a row this time. I made sure that I was down at the end of a row, so I didn't show you in the middle of a row. But um, last time, so this is my floozy by Libby Johnson, and it has mosaic knitting, and it's very subtle. It's actually much brighter in person, um, especially this pink. But it's very subtle, so I figured it's going to go with a lot of different things. It's a cardigan. Um, I've, since last time, so I'm done with the color work now, and since last time, you see here my marker. So I've done a couple of inches, and now this was my experimentation trying to do continental knitting. <laughs> didn't go so well. Don't like it. I've tried it a million times. I just don't like it. So, um, yeah, this is my, that's why it's a little wonky, but it'll block out. So I've done a couple of inches there and now it's just back and forth, which is not going to be fun. So it's back and forth with the same color yarn all the way down to the body. And I know there's two different options. There's a short version and then there's a long version. Not sure which version I'm going to do quite yet, but you can see I've had that much since I split for the sleeves. So it's gonna be quite a while before I finish this sweater um, to the length that I want it to be. But at least I got the sleeves done. And let's see if I could show you a little bit. A little bit there. There we go. So then I'll have to come up with uh, what color I'm gonna pick for the buttons as well, which I have no idea. So we'll get to that when it's actually done and I can see the buttons in person compared to the sweater. But yeah, so there it is. Um, so now we're down to the boring part. <laughs> it's a matter of getting that done. That's gonna take forever. But that is my 100 day project. And that is a floozy by Libby Johnson. And then the other one that I wanted to show you, I'm trying to think if I showed you this last time or not. I know I've showed you this uh, pretty recently because it's a Christmas present, so I'm trying to get it done. But there is some uh, modifications that I'm making to this sweater. So this is for my daughter, and it is a Christmas gift. So what's going on here is that I am making this sweater for her. And this is the Alaska by Camille Descato. Descato. I will put that on the screen. <laughs> and this is what it looks like so far. It's, I'm making it in the small size I think so there's an extra small and a small so I'm making the small so it's a little bit bigger for her right now and this is the adult size and basically what this sweater is supposed to look like is that it's supposed to have color work at the bottom with trees right um however when I got to the color work I got a couple rows in and I asked my daughter because she's getting to the point where she's starting to get really picky about what she wears and I didn't want to make this sweater with all that color work and then her saying, I don't, I don't want that. I'm not going to wear that or not even tell me that. Just put it in the closet and never wear it. So I didn't want to get to that point. So I asked her, I'm like, okay, so do you want me to make you this color work section or do you just want me to not make the color work section? And she looked at it and she's like, yeah, I would prefer without it. So basically it's the Alaska without color work. <laughs> so I did all of the, um, I followed the pattern until I got to the color work. I actually had to rip out the color work. I had done like three rows of color work. And frankly, I was not enjoying the color work because the first couple of rows, um, and again, they're trees, so they start from the top and they go to the bottom. But at the very top, there is a repeat of like 20 or 30 stitches. And out of the 20 or 30 stitches, there's only like one color, right? So you have blue, 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 and then there's one stitch that's gray. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. But there was only one stitch of gray in that whole section of like 20 or 30 stitches. So basically, you have to carry your yarn over long periods uh, or long sections and that was not fun the carrying the yarn was not fun so when she said that she didn't want it I'm like okay good that means I don't have to do it anymore because <laughs> it really doesn't get um more of a pattern until you start getting down into the trees where the um you're not carrying so many stitches you're kind of I don't know if that's making any sense but if you've ever done color work hopefully you understand what I'm talking about that you don't have to carry you know a strand over like 10 stitches or at least yeah 
So anyway, all that to say that she didn't want the color work, so then I just ripped out a couple of rows and just did it plain. So um, since she wanted me to alter it, I did get a sleeve done. So last time you saw it was down here in this little Christmas tree from Charmed and Dangerous. I got this a couple years ago. So there's a little Christmas tree. So I did get a couple of inches done, and then I got a whole other sleeve done. And these are going to be a little bit baggy on her, which she likes. So I made that sleeve, and then I picked up and knitted the um, collar, which I don't remember if it called for the contrasting yarn or not. But I had this color that I already bought for this pattern, so I figured, well, might as well use the contrasting yarn for that. And then I'm working on the other sleeve right now because I'm not sure how much yarn I'm going to have left over and how long it's going to be. So I'm doing the other sleeve, and then I'm using whatever's left over for the body. And then I'll just use the, the gray again for the ribbing here, or for the ribbing in the other arm, and then the ribbing down here. So basically it's just going to be a plain sweater, but I think there's enough going on that, you know, there, with this tweed yarn, this is Knit Picks. It's a tweed base. Let me see if I can find the tag real quick. This is the City Tweed DK. And I love, love, love working with this yarn. I don't know how it's going to wear, um, but I love working with it. And you can see the little... Tweedy bits. Um, it's already a busy sweater with all the tweed, so I figured that the color work was just gonna make it too crazy anyway, so that's fine. So we'll just finish this sweater. And she has blue eyes, so this is gonna go really well with her complexion and her, her eye color. So I'm hoping Christmas is next week, and I'm hoping to get this done and blocked by next week, so we'll see. Um, so I probably won't have it next time I podcast because she'll already have it in her possession so I might just have to take pictures after I get it done and then show it off to you next time. So here it is. Um, this is the Alaska again minus the color work the Alaska. All right so that concludes our knitting portion of this episode. I know I have had a lot of finished objects. Um, those little hats just they got me this week I think and then I was just finishing up some Christmas projects. Um, apparently it's just a, an Amelia heavy week. The only thing that I was knitting on myself for this week was my blanket, which I made a little bit of progress, but not enough to show you. And then my floozy. Everything else has just been like by the wayside. Um, so there is all the knitting for this week. Um, in terms of my life, it is pretty chaotic right now. The holidays, of course, are coming up, um, which we're not doing a whole lot. We're just staying home, but it's a matter of finishing up last minute gifts, sending gifts off, mailing things out in the mail, going to the post office, which has been, <laughs> it's never fun going to the post office the week before Christmas. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's, the holidays have been kind of crazy getting all that done, but it's all done now. All the presents are bought. Everything's mostly wrapped and I don't have to ship anything else. So that's good. And the only other thing that's going on right now is the finals. Um, I have finals, for those of you who don't know, um, who are new, thank you for watching, first of all. And for those of you who keep coming back, thank you for coming back. But for those of you who don't know, I am a college professor in history, American history, to be precise. And I am teach. I was teaching two classes this, this semester, and then I'm teaching two classes next semester. Different classes, so I have a whole new prep um, for next semester, although I could, you probably use some of the stuff I used this semester, but... Anyway, so I have I had a really big class semester of 90 students, and then I had a small class of 11 students. So I have over 100 and, what is that, 101 students to um, grade and submit grades for, for their final. They all submitted their finals last night. It was due last night, and I think I have everybody's except for one who got an extension because of, he had some personal issues he had to take care of. So basically, I'm waiting for his to come in, and grades are due. I have to submit them to the university by this weekend. So for the next three days, I will be grading essays. Um, I do have a grader uh, for my big class, for my 90-people class. However, he was absent for a couple of weeks that we talked about the final exam, and I feel like he's not prepared to grade those. So I we made arrangements that he would grade a lot more of the other assignments and then I would grade the midterms and the finals um, that way and he wasn't a history major so that made me a little bit nervous about how he was going to look at the, the finals so I decided to grade all of those myself because I think that that would be I know what I wanted from the students and I was the one that was giving them direction on how I wanted them to complete the assignment but 
that whole grader thing was a whole other thing because I didn't get a grader until like the second week of class. So that just kind of changed my whole idea of what I was going to teach. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. I'm teaching the next, the same class, the same big class that I taught this semester. I'm teaching that next fall. So at least next to fall, I'll be much more prepared on how to address this whole issue with the grader because I'm supposed to be getting a grader next year. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. So I do have a whole lot of papers to grade by this weekend and submit final grades. So far, most of them have been pretty good, at least the people that you know, attended class. <laughs> you could really tell people that were in class and the people that were not um, from their final exam. But um, so I'm doing that. And uh, yeah, that's basically been consuming my life <laughs> for the past week because I opened up the final last week and then they had until yesterday to submit it. So I've been grading them off and on. And then I, they just all submitted them yesterday. So I have that to do today. So I'm trying to kind of reward myself, you know, grade five at a time and then take like 15 minute break and then grade five at a time and take a 15 minute break to kind of make it a little bit less awful. <laughs> um, so yeah, grading is not the best part of teaching by any means. I haven't met anybody that likes grading. So other than working on finals, I do have plans to prep for my classes next semester, which are going to be all senior level classes, which I'm really excited about because that means that most of them are history majors. So they understand how the historical narrative works and they understand how history works and they understand how to write in terms of the historical discipline. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a much more of a discussion based class than just me lecturing. I hate lecturing. <laughs> I really like discussing and kind of seeing them develop their own thoughts instead of me just lecturing at them. So I like to have a combination of those things, but sometimes for the big classes, you can't do that. But for these smaller classes, I think the, the biggest one I'm going to get is like 35 students, which is pretty small, um, are actually pretty average size in terms of a college student, uh, a college course. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to more discussion, more analytical thinking, um, more kind of picking their brains a little bit and kind of seeing how they look at different parts of history. And yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that next semester. So that should be really fun. Okay. And I think that is everything. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Happy holidays if you celebrate. And um, hopefully you have a very restful end of the year. And I will see you in two weeks in January for a full length episode and I will see you before then for smaller episodes about whips and about plans for 2020 <laughs> about 2020 so I will see you in the future and I hope you have a great rest of December bye happy knitting <laughs>